All right. Well, welcome to the April ICG meeting. Um, the meeting's being recorded. Um, I guess we can go around and introduce ourselves since we're in person for the first time this year. So I'm Anna Marshall. I'm uh, an environmental planner at EMC. I'm Sophia Cortazzo from EMPA. Regina Aris, BMC. BMC. Brian Howard, Arrow County. Catherine Salerano, MDE. Uh, Jasmine, go ahead. Oh, tried to switch my camera, but hello, Jasmine Champion um, with the Federal Highway Administration as the Planning Program Manager. Nice to meet everyone. Thanks, and Greg. Um, hello, let me turn my camera. There we go, Gregory Vico. Hey, Greg. I actually Greg. am on my way to the Fort Meade office. I got called in. There's a lot, as you all may, may or may not know, there's a lot going on with the, the bridge situation. And uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm getting messages from high up to, to, to get some answers that I've been searching for. Um, so it's just been a lot, but I've been asked to actually go into Fort Meade. So I'm going into Fort uh -huh. Meade. So I'll be on my, I'll be around, but my, my big camera will be on pause. Thanks no for trying, right? Yeah, Stay thank safe. Yeah. All right. Um, Thanks for joining in person and online for those online. Um, the first order of business is the approval of the March 2024 minutes. And has everyone had a chance to review those? Okay. Um, and does anyone have any questions? Um, okay. Um, and we'll now vote on the approval of the minutes. Do you have a motion? Oh, sorry, I skipped that part. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes, please. Brian, you can only second. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Thank you. If you weren't at yesterday's tech committee meeting, Brian was always the second from every. <laughs> I did the first two in the photo. Oh, that's student jumped in. <laughs> Thank you. And um, we'll now vote on approval. So everyone in favor say aye. 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 Wonderful. Minutes are approved. We'll now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is um, to go over the new projects in the 2025 to 2028 TIP and um, discuss their conformity. Since this is being recorded, can you put the agenda up for this sheet? Because when we post it online, they're just going to see the right. <laughs> <laughs> like we were talking about. <laughs> sure. Um, I am about to share a PowerPoint. So uh, here we go. And you can probably close. Do that. Okay, there. And then you could close that participants. So oh, that's the other view. You're okay. Okay. All right. So I kind of made, I just made a um, PowerPoint basically with this kind of layout um, so we can just go through one by one. Um, hopefully if you had a chance to review them. There's about 12 new ones and um, a couple that have been re in, put into the tip from previous tips or some amendments as well. So um, we'll just kind of go through, there's been two in Anne Arundel County. Um, the first ones is EV charging stations and other green technology. And um, just based on, on the, conformity um, rule and the fact that it is helping to transition out fossil fuel vehicles, we are recommending it to be exempt. So anyone has any problems with that one? Okay. 
And the next one in Anne Arundel County is the Odenton Mark TOD. And this one is they're partnering with MDOT to develop a new parking garage with amenities. And um, they're gonna, it's gonna be next to the Odenton Mark train platform. And it will be the first phase of a multi-phase development approach. And um, with this one, we're recommending it to be exempt because um, from the conformity rule, I thought it was because of reconstruction or renovation of transit buildings. Um, and that one is good, okay. This one is in Baltimore City, and it is um, Belair Road Rehab, and um, it's to it's no no um, highway capacity. It's just uh, preservation and adding uh, sidewalks, pedestrian ramps, crosswalks, drainage improvements, and other pedestrian improvements. And because of this. Um, uh, for the conformity rule, I said pavement resurfacing and rehabilitation, so that would be exempt. Okay. The fourth one is Keith Avenue Rehab. And I, I know I've driven on this road and it's pretty <laughs> bumpy. <laughs> so, so good to see that one in that tip. Um, but this one, the same as the other one with pavement resurfacing. So it'll be exempt and there's no highway capacity increase. Um, the next one in the city is Russell Street Bridge, Vida Bridge Replacement and um, bridge replacements and reconstruction bridges is usually exempt. Um, and it's also not adding any lanes, so no uh, um, capacity increase there. Okay. And I do see heads nodding. Get, and you know, if you have any questions, please just answer as we go through. Mm -hmm. The next one's the Kelly Avenue Bridge replacement, and uh, same thing as the other one, uh, bridge bridge replacement is um, exempt under the con with the conformity rule because of reconstruction bridges, and it's also not a capacity increase. Um, it's just a bridge repair. Um, the next two are 2022 and also 2023 pedestrian roadway safety improvements. Um, and they are both recommended to be exempt because um, they're the pedestrian safety improvements as well as um, adding pedestrian signage and safe crossings and uh, just improving safety of the road. And uh, I think it's just to add funding for those various improvements. So those are those kind of next two, which are pretty similar. And what's the difference between the two? Or they're just for different um, years? This one says 2022, this one says 2023. Yeah, and there's different funding sources that go along with. Oh, okay. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess this one, the 2023, is funded through the um, Highway Safety Improvement Program, where 2022 looks like. Um, so Keith, maybe we can ask Baltimore City, what does 22 and 23 mean? Is it a specific set of projects identified in 22 and they're working their way through? But I'm sure there are people going to ask questions. And does that mean that it's going to be annually a new set? Okay. It just, it might be nice to know and then we're not guessing. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, good question. 
Um, all right, well, the next one is in Carroll County, and um, this one is Woodbine Road over South Branch, Patasco River Bridge, and it's um, replacement of the existing bridge to, which was a two-span bridge, and now it's gonna be a single-span bridge with two travel lanes. And um, it's exempt from air quality conformity because there's no capacity and it's a bridge repair. Still, I mean, it's probably late. Is this, this is new, so this is still coming in. Um, it does say shoulders. Can you know where that is in Carroll County? It, should we ask for um, sidewalk? I mean, you know, in certain parts of well, jurisdictions, if they're really away from a lot of development, we don't push, but bridges last a long time. Mm -hmm. So when I see a replacement, it's like, like there's a shoulder, but do, are we going to have people walk on the shoulder for the next 75 years? Mm -hmm. So I always wonder. So I always ask that question, and, and Brian's very familiar with that question. And, they, <laughs> and the response generally is we don't know until we get further into design whether we're going to be able to have shoulder or uh, sidewalks or. Okay, I'm going to look up where it is, and we may strongly recommend, depending on development near it, uh, that, okay, that's me. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. I, I do the same thing there you know, on our bridge projects. You know, and a lot of what I do is try to make sure at least there's no room to add sidewalks later, um, although we're running into issues with parapet heights and stuff mm -hmm. based on the sidewalk and all that, but um, depending on where you're at, like you said, it's going to be at least 50 years, if not more. So. Yeah. Okay. And then, and so just, you know, we tend to look, um, I do, uh, we will map all of our tip projects and we have a VPI vulnerable populations index layer. And then we have um, the bike head projects. So we know where the, all the jurisdictions are planning their networks. And if, a bridge replacement is is in an area that's low income. A lot of people walk. I, I really want to see sidewalks. And if, for instance, this bridge is where a bike pen project is planned, that would become a gap for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I think sometimes the engineers sort of replacing kind, unless there's some new bridge technology, and they're not thinking about the bigger network. So that's where I'm headed with some of that. I did look this one up. I think it is because I had to do the math for it. I'm pretty sure it's a mountain of nowhere. Okay. You know, <laughs> we wouldn't push that in that Which case. Not unusual for Carroll County to be in. Right. And, and there, I mean, I've had citizens on our advisory committees advocate for shoulders on both sides of every single bridge. And that's great. But in the end, we have a limited amount of money that we're all trying to use across the region. And so I, at least, if I make a recommendation like that, I'd, I'd like it to be in an area that really makes sense. Hello, can you all hear me okay? This is Greg from Region 3. Um, I think that's good information, but I just always want to remind, and I know you all know that, you know, I, I guess the, the wording, a change in design, or they won't know until they start the design of it, you know, we would need to, you know, depending on what those changes were, we would need to look at the project again to just make sure it would still fall under the exempt category. Correct. Good point. Yes, thank you. All right, moving on to the next one. So that was the only one in Carroll County for the new projects. Um, the next one is in Hartford County, and it's... Um, the Stafford Road Bridge, number 19 over Herring Run. And um, this one, it's just uh, upgrading the beams and abutments to carry legal loads. And um, no highway capacity increases, um, really just maintenance and safety upgrades. I have to say that I think that's the first time I've ever seen the term under design in a description. <laughs> yeah, that's for that to me too. Yeah. I guess it's just been there and there's not yeah, a lot going on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of traffic on that. 
I think bridges in America in general are an average of a D rating or something. Oh, well. All right. And um, the next one is the MTA Ma Mondo. Sorry, I don't know my term. <laughs> Transit hub. And um, this one's recommended to be exempt just because it's a just a new um, transit hub that's under consideration and it's gonna um, ensure accessibility for people. Um, connect bus routes, metro stations, and um, it will also incorporate, generate sustainable energy, I guess. That's kind of cool. Um, and be a TO, TOD. And um, under the conformity rule, there isn't like an exact thing for transit oriented de development, but I thought it was under renovation of transit buildings. Um, I mean, it functions as a transit hub now. What this project is doing is adding the services and amenities that make it a, a really functional hub. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. So I would think except is appropriate. Okay. Um, the next. Three on the list I didn't include in the PowerPoint just because um, all three of them are amendments into the tip that um, the MTA commuter rail Martin Airport, we reviewed that one in September. The Annapolis Electric Passenger Ferry Pilot Program, that one was reviewed in December 2023. And then the next one is actually one that Keith will talk about today. So that's going to be discussed as an amendment. And um, so the this one here, the Hawkins Point Bridge over CFX Railroad is um, an older project that wasn't in the last tip, but is now back in the tip. And that's for Baltimore City. And um, it's a replacement of the bridge um, over the CSX railroad tracks, and um, it looks like it it replaces 0.53 miles of the road, and um, is there's no highway capacity increases, and primarily bridge reconstruction. So we're recommending that to be exempt, as it was previously. I mean, it does add a. a Turn lane, but I don't think that's uh, it's fairly short, first off, and I don't think it's really capacity improvements. Out of curiosity, is there or what was the reason behind like removing it and putting it back in? Just like the history of the project, I guess. We have a tip number on the sheet, it's a uh, 1299. Okay. Three. It came into the tip in 1999. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Baltimore City has wanted to do this and they didn't have money. So it may have started and then it's been on hold. Mm -hmm. And now they have the money. But that's how long this project has oh, been. That's how we read those codes. Yeah, and I mean, that. yeah, that's the that's year fun. that it first came into the tip. And Generally, when this happens, it's because there it gets up to construction, mm -hmm. and then it there's not enough money because that's a large, usually construction phase is the most expensive. Mm -hmm. So, just a little tidbit if you're looking at these, you can tell when they start. I'd love to do a little. Mm -hmm. it, Baltimore City has yes. the most trouble, but a lot of their projects because it's the oldest infrastructure mm -hmm. in the state and in many parts of the country, and you just never know when you start working on something, what's going to happen. So, <laughs> um, I mean, we could look into it in more detail for you for the different yeah. phases, but um, I'm sure this is because they did not have money and it's just been on hold. Okay. And did it go through like, the conformity exemption process before then and it was considered exempt? Yeah. Well, if it's a bridge replacement, okay. I would feel safe to say, but we'll go back and do some research. Okay. I okay, think. 
um, maybe you said when you gave me the list of projects that it was exempt for. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, so now it's back in years later. <laughs> Um, all right, well, that's all the ones that were on the exempt list. And then there is one on the non-exempt list, a new project. And that one was in Harvard County, Perryman Access Mitchell Lane, which um, is a construction of a new road and a bridge that connects US 40 um, to the Perryman Peninsula. And um, it will be an access point for residential use on the western side of Perryman and then um, to the north of Amtrak railroad tracks. And um, it so it's adding a roadway and um, therefore is not exempt. And the data, it says it goes from zero to two lanes. So I guess that's a two lane uh, highway capacity. And um, the justification for the project is that it's consistent with the master planning goal to maintain safe and adequate transportation system and to serve future populations. So that's why it's added in, but it is not exempt from the air quality. Um, and then that was all the new ones and all the ones that I shared with you all, um, pretty much the ongoing list. I, you don't have to review those ones because we've already looked at them. But um, uh, yeah, so the, then the, these new projects now will um, we'll take a vote. To, Just real quick, ask for the record. For the, all of the ongoing projects, are we clear that the scope did not change? Just so that mm -hmm. then you feel comfortable saying whatever they were can continue. We weren't aware of any scope changes, were we? Not on, no. Okay. Not that we have I just want to say that. So you all are comfortable okay. that we're just moving past that. They didn't change, so. So there was like the, the TSMO that changed the scope. Reduced it, amendment. yeah. Mm -hmm. That went in as an amendment. Mm -hmm. that, and that we've already talked about. We've already talked about yeah, that. Yes. So yeah. Okay. That, that I just want everybody to be comfortable if we're asked a question and you went, well, we didn't do that, but <laughs> we would have brought those to your attention if the scope had changed. Yeah, I feel comfortable with that. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let me see here. So um. Does anyone have any specific questions or comments about any of the projects um, that we went through? Um, all right. I don't know any other questions. questions. Okay. All right. Yeah, we we're doing these. It seems they seem relatively straightforward, so it's always good. Um, and. If there are no other questions, can I have a motion and a second to approve the conformity status of the new projects in the TIP? Do you make a motion? <laughs> and that was, <laughs> I thought you were going to be a rebel there. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll now vote on approval of the conformity status of the new projects in the 2025 to 2028 TIP. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. The conformity status of the new projects is approved. Thank you all. Let me stop sharing this. And um, next up on the agenda is the 2024 um, to 2027 TIP amendments. And um, I have a PowerPoint here that Keith prepared, and I will. Did you see your screen? screen? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, share. Okay, Keith, the floor is yours. Okay, well, this is probably mostly for 
Sophia, she's feeling like I think it wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today I'm going to uh, present five different tip amendments. One from Baltimore City and four M.MTA uh, amendments. Um, so the first project is uh, from Baltimore City. It's uh, the Rays Transit Priority Project. Uh, and that was in the previous tips, but was not included in last year's tips. So they're adding it back in. Um, the scope of the project uh, includes dedicated bus lanes utilizing just uh, those dedicated bus lanes will utilize existing parking lanes. So no, no widening is necessary to create those those parking or those uh, bus lanes. Uh, other things would be like transit signal prioritization, or queue jumping for buses at intersections, accessibility improvements, and things like that. So this, the scope really has not changed since it was in the tip previously. Um, Uh, previously, this was considered exempt, um, and we're recommending it to remain exempt again. And the next project is, uh, the next four projects actually are all uh, the MTA projects. Uh, the first one is the Mark's, Mark Facilities Project. Uh, this is an ongoing project that will add additional construction funds uh, that are going to be used at various Mark facilities in the region. Um, uh, improvements include uh, station upgrades, maintenance of track, uh, and, and or uh, track improvements. Uh, currently, this is uh, this funding is geared towards improvements at the BWI uh, facility, uh, the garage at BWI, Riverside facility, uh, and then uh, Odenton, Elkton, and Bayview stations. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, uh, you know, uh, this project was uh, deemed exempt in the past, and uh, we're re re recommending that it remain exempt for this amendment. And for the record, Harper County wants to feel some love with Mark Sullivan. did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next project. I guess we'll just go through them all, and then you guys can ask questions. Yeah, sorry, we should have said that at the beginning. Uh, the next project is the Kirk Bus Facility. This project is actually complete, so there's actually they're just shifting money from previous years uh, into the, the current uh, tip to uh, uh, the proper year of obligation of the funds. So there's there's no physical improvements being done with this project. It's already completed. Construction. Um, so we're, this is a really cool project. Not only is it upgrading the, this is one of three major bus divisions. Not only is it making the change from diesel fuel buses to zero emission buses, but you know, diesel buses make a lot of noise when they start up in the morning for their routes, and there's diesel fumes, which have been getting better over the years. But this is located in a low income community, and they've had concerns about the noise and the smell. So with this new facility, not only is it zero emission, so they won't smell or hear, but all of the buses will be maintained and washed inside. So it won't be an eyesore for the community. I, I will say MTA did a lot of work with the community to address neighborhood concerns. So this is a real feel good project. That's great. Yeah. I've already started to see the um, zero emission buses driving around the city because there's a few of them are actually in service now. Right. So yeah. It's yeah. exciting to spot them. Yes. <laughs> so, again, as I mentioned, this was previously listed as exempt. And we're recommending that it stay exempt it's just because we don't really do anything with that money. Mm -hmm. um, the next project is a new project. Um, this is uh, adding funding for the purchase of low or no emission buses uh, for Anne Arundel County. I was happy about that, I'm sure. Um, uh, this, uh, yeah, and the buses are gonna be uh, hybrid electric buses, so they'll replace 
I guess they're going to be replacing uh, the existing diesel fuel buses. Uh, it's all part of the Anne Arundel County five-year plan to transition to zero emission fleet. Uh, and we're recommending this when you get to next. Uh, we're recommending this one to be exempt as well, since it's just purchase of zero emission buses and re replacing the diesel. So the final project uh, that was presented yesterday at the tech committee is the uh, Baltimore Penn Station multimodal investment project. This project uh, includes minor roadway improvements, uh, things like adding dedicated bus lanes on Charles Street, uh, real-time signage, bike and pet improvements, uh, and some station improvements. And again, similar to that other uh, project where they were adding dedicated bus lanes, this is not creating new lanes. It's just utilizing the existing space or reconfiguring the lane widths and things like that to, to get the, the dedicated bus lane. And so no capacity improvements are included with this one. Uh, so we're we're recommending that re yeah. Jeez, <laughs> <not safe. laughs> uh, we're recommending this to be exempt as well. It'd be nice to see the scaffolding come down around Penn Station and really have that. I, yeah, I thought they had completed a lot of the renovations. They are they're moving. So more yeah. more are coming apparently. They they've completed the um the new line for Sella. Like there's a new platform there. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. So any questions on any of those projects? I don't have any questions. I guess it was my personal presentation to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but those, those seem pretty straightforward on all those. Um, I never know if we have to do a motion in a second for this. As you heard. All right. <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, can I have a motion and a second to approve the before recess of the amendments? I'll make a motion to approve the conformity says of the amendment. I'll make a second. <laughs> I just won't have to update in the minutes. Thank you. And all in favor. <laughs> All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, okay, the conformity status is approved. And um, we put the agenda back up. Um, the next item on the agenda is the member updates. And I just realized I forgot to give you well, or, but if you have anything for here. Wasn't the meeting canceled last That's time? So that wasn't really it was, was. But Brian is also happy to share that the BRTB is launching their federal certification comment period on Thursday, tomorrow. 30 day comment period for the feds. He's very excited to share that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the. The bridge collapsed last March to the Tuesday, which was the other yeah. meeting. Yeah. That's right. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so the yeah. the two tip amendments that were supposed to be approved in March, Tech Committee did review, and I guess you all did. I don't know. I 70, the reduction, yeah. and okay. the NAVI. Yeah. They will go to the April 19th elected official meeting. Hmm. So they'll have like six tip amendments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, a bunch of work, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's a BMC first that's usually 30 minutes, and then BRTB, and they try to keep it to 30 minutes because the elected officials and secretary don't want to spend too much time. And both meetings, there's a lot to do, <laughs> and they don't want to talk about any of the important, not, not the important, but any of the material that needs to happen. Because they all want to talk about the bridge collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they will get this some work done. And we're lucky to have Jasmine here because I think she is swamped with not only certification, but with the, the bridge situation. So. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, Catherine, do you have any MDE updates? I don't think I do anymore. Or I don't do anymore. I don't think I do today. <laughs> okay. Um, Sophia. I don't think I know anything either today. Okay. Um, Greg, if you're still there, do you have any um, updates from EPA 
Legion 3. I'm still here. Um, yes. No, no updates. Um, re recently, again, we had the request concerning um, the bridge repair with the key and uh, the salvage material. Um, we had an initial response, pretty much saying we believe it it would fall under emergency relief. Um, but um, we, I'm, I'm waiting with the response with headquarters. Um, concerning salvage cleanup and um, headquarters is actually bumping it up to the attorneys um, to just make sure um, what we're saying or believe the category, this unfortunate situation fall, should fall under still is in line with our thoughts. So right now, um, those initial thoughts are being bumped to the attorneys just to verify that what we're thinking um, is applicable. And I think we're, we're, we're likely a week out before having a more concrete um, response um, for, for MDE um, concerning, um, again, this unfortunate situation. So I'll be in, you know, I'll be in touch as soon as I, I get confirmation um, concerning that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess to add on to uh, something I just read yesterday was that there, there's new greenhouse gas emission standards for heavy duty vehicles, phase three. And um, so that should start up with model years 2027 through 2032. So that was a EPA announcement that I got in the Federal Register the other day. Um, Jasmine, do you have any updates from FHWA? Hey, I think many of my updates were just shared by uh, Regina um, being pulled in a few different directions here. Um, it's a lot going on. Um, I do know that the RTB has sent in a few different questions as it relates to the TMA cert and um, some of the upcoming STIP amendments. So I am working on getting answers to that. Um, so um, I know you guys are doing the public outreach starting tomorrow. So I am working to get an answer back to you all so far as the um, outreach material. Okay. Um, so look for an email soon. I pretty much have an answer. It's just one more thing I'm trying to verify. Um, so I have that going on. And um, of course, we all know it's UPWP season. So I, I gave a, I provided a checklist, I believe. It should have came to you all of the checklist I will be using to review the UPWPs uh, this year and going forward. If you all have any questions about the items that are on there, just please let me know. Um, and I also was trying to find the housing consideration update um, that is required by bill. I will, if I haven't sent that to you all, I will send that and that should be reflected um, in the transportation planning decision-making process. So mm -hmm. look for that email for me as well, but that's all I have. And Jasmine, I did take two screenshots when you were talking about the UPWP checklist at the round table, but mm -hmm. that did not send anything out to us. Do oh. You think, could you send an email to MDOT, but, or, or if you send it to me, I can circulate it to the other MPOs, but we have not seen that. And I, I can sort of read my screenshot, but it's not really as clear as it, I would prefer. Okay, I will reach back out um, to MDOT to ensure that it gets sent out, sent out to the MPOs first. And then once I go uh, go through them, um, if you guys do not receive it, let me know and then I'll send it. Fair enough, thank you. All right. I know there's a, a lot going on at MDOT as well. Um, Heather Murphy has announced her retirement. And then Tyson, who is the, I don't know what he's called, director of regional planning, but whatever he does, um, he's going out in a week or two for some major surgery. So there, there's sort of 
going to be a little bit of a gap there. Is it Sean Ray or is it Jeff Anderson? Mm -hmm. But he's only been there for about two months. And so he came from Spring Park, America, and he likes some kids. <laughs> well, what do you know when Heather's leaving? May May first. May first. Oh, wow. Wow. She told us yesterday, April 16th. Well, I guess it's officially May 1st, but she has to be very comfortable. She was in the or whatever. I, 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 oh. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Lots of different directions. Yeah, we dive into stuff. Okay, I think yeah. I mean, we don't have a FTA rep today. Daniel's not on, so um, we're good with the updates. So the last item is other business, and um, quickly. Before I ask if anyone else has anything, yesterday I got an email from AMPO, so it's about the greenhouse gas performance measure that um, FHWA was um, requiring. So there's been two rulings, one from Texas and one from Kentucky, about how FHWA lacks the authority to regulate greenhouse gas emissions through this performance measure. And so at the moment, MPOs and states are no longer required to submit those targets. Um, I think MDOT had already submitted the targets, um, but MPOs now don't need to until further notice. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was something like yeah. with the Texas, like the way it went through, I don't know the official words, but it was like the lawsuit basically, like whatever was going through with Texas. Their determination was like that this would apply to all states, not that it was like only in their scenario and that everyone else still had to do it. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's just like an until further notice situation, like wait in here. Yeah, so it'd be nice, um, in the near future if FHWA also gives us guidance so we don't just listen to Eastern Kentucky judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's something in there. No, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, look. I thought there was something I was going to throw out. Well, I think um, there might be like documentation, or, but this is was the first time that um, we were required to have declining targets for CO2 emissions. But um, now we don't at the moment need to do it. But I don't know. We probably, again, will have to in the future. For now, that is no longer on our agenda. Wait, when I was starting to figure it all out. <laughs> I know, it's like our name is scrambling to get it all together, and then all of a sudden it's like stopped. Right. So, <laughs> we'll okay. see. I'm sure this will not be the last we're right. hearing of it. Yeah. We'll be prepped for when we have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, and besides that, is there any other business to come before ICG today? Okay. Hey, this is Greg. I just want to verify um, the we are still scheduled, right? Isn't it May 1st, 2nd for the recertification? Am I still on target with those dates? Yes, that's correct. Okay. First. Yes, Greg, did you receive my. Um, um, calendar invite for those dates. I believe I yes, had you there. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I probably have. I've been out of work for two weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, literally. Uh, so I am, <laughs> I am going back through the process of gathering two weeks worth of emails. Uh, so if, you know, that's why I'm like, any any calls of me as I have, I'm like verifying stuff. Um, so, yes, if you could forward it to me, I'll search your name. I'll find it. But okay, right, that, that sounds good. Um, I do plan on coming in those days um, for the meetings, so I could be in the office in the building with you all. All right, sounds good. Good, okay, thank you. Thanks. All right. Um. And the next scheduled ICG meeting is on Wednesday, May 8th, and that will be virtual. Um, and 
yeah, this, so this concludes the ICG meeting. Thank you all for coming in person today and for joining remotely and it's good discussion from the new projects. Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine and Greg. And number four. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye. Yep. Best of luck out there.